Hi everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services back with another tutorial video. This one's about instrument doublings and what I mean by that is for instance if you have an alto sax player that is also playing tenor sax in the same piece or you have say a reed player in a pit orchestra who plays flute, clarinet, and saxophone all in the same show and switches between them at various points. Uh, say you have an oboe, oboist who also plays English horn. You get the idea. At any given point, the music needs to be in the correct key and have the proper transposition of the instrument that's playing. So if you have an alto sax in E flat, of course that means, needs to be a major six up from concert. If you have a tenor sax, it needs to be a major ninth up from concert. Uh, it's in B flat. So you want to be able to show the music in the correct transposition. And you might be inclined to think at first, well, I can just transpose the music. Say I want this music to be uh, for the tenor sax, and we're in Sibelius here. I'll show you finale in a moment. But you might just be inclined to say, well, I can transpose it. I can transpose it up a, a fourth, because that'll get me the difference between an E-flat instrument and a B-flat instrument. Click OK and be done with it. That's really not the right way to do it because even though it may look okay, a couple of things. One, it's not going to play back correctly. It's actually going to play back a perfect fourth higher than where it should be. Also, if you try to copy it to other staves, other instruments, it's going to copy a perfect fourth higher than where it should be, and it's going to have undesirable consequences. So you really don't want to do it that way. So let's go ahead and undo what we just did. And instead, create something known as an instrument change. Process is a little bit different in Finale, but I'll get to that in a moment. Right now we're in Sibelius, so we're going to create other instrument change. There is a shortcut available. And what we get is something very similar to the dialog that pops up at the start of a new score. And we have our instruments available to us. I've already gone ahead and selected the tenor saxophone. And we want to actually have these options checked. You can experiment and see what happens if they're not checked, but for the moment let's leave these checked. And we'll click OK. And let's just respace our music. And by the way, the way to do that is to go to um, uh, Layout and then uh, Reset Note Spacing right here. And that has now given us a transposition that is for the tenor sax, but it's done much more than that as well. We actually have uh, an announcement of the tenor sax right here. We'll just go ahead and move that up and out of the way of the chords. Sibelius has helpfully added a warning to tenor sax. Look what else happened. The key is now correct. We're, it's actually two flats instead of one for the particular concert key of A flat that we're in. Also on the left hand side, Sibelius has also changed the abbreviated instrument from alto sax to tenor sax, so that's correct. All the chords are correct. And then at the end of the passage, it's gone ahead and put the one flat key signature back in and to told us that we're moving back to the alto saxophone. So a whole host of things have happened really at the click of a mouse. It's also going to play back correctly and it's also going to copy into other staves correctly. So it behaves as if you had literally inserted a tenor sax into the middle of your alto sax staff, uh, which is kind of what the player is doing. They're taking the tenor sax and playing that for a while uh, between passages of playing the alto sax. So that's the proper way to do it in Sibelius. It's known as an instrument change. Let's go ahead and move to Finale. And for the moment, we're working in Finale 2010, although this works in many prior versions of Finale. You'll actually notice that we have our setup that to look fairly similar to Sibelius. I happen to prefer this look, but uh, don't be alarmed. We actually are in Finale. And we've got the same music here. The process is similar. Um, what we want to do is actually create a staff style. Staff styles are actually very powerful, and they can do a whole lot of things besides just changing instruments. But for the moment, we're just going to use it for its instrument changing capabilities. So we go to the Staff tool. Similar process as we just did. We want to select the passage in question. I mean, what we want to do is actually uh, go to the staff menu and apply staff style. You can also um, right click as well uh, on the passage. Let me just show you. I'm right clicking on that. You get a prefab list, if you will. 
So you can either do it that way or the longer way is to, of course, to go to the staff menu and apply staff style and you would say score in parts and then a list of staff styles comes up. And you can actually define any number of staff styles that you wish, but in default documents, um, Finale comes with the B-flat tenor saxophone transposition. It actually has a meta tool assigned to it, 4. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Something very similar just happened. If you uh, noticed, remember what we did in, in Sibelius, the music is now transposed to the proper key. The chords are transposed to the proper key. On the left-hand side here, it switches from tenor sax, uh, alto sax to tenor sax, and then, of course, back to alto sax. About the only thing that Finale didn't do automatically is create a, um, a warning announcement and an, and an instrument a change announcement. Those you would have to do via the expression tool. And of course, you could create technique text, for instance, that said to tenor sax. And you could say, you know, create here something that said tenor saxophone. And so you basically get the idea of how to do this in Finale. So the process is very similar. So that's known as a staff style. And again, that's in the staff menu. And you can actually see some, uh, Finale actually has a little bar here. On my computer, it's blue, a uh, light blue, but that's because I've set it to be that way. You can actually customize the color of that. So there it is in Sibelius. We've got our transposed music, our instrument change. And here we've got it in Finale using a staff style. This will play back correctly. It will also copy to other staves correctly and interact very well with the rest of your score. So that's instrument doublings in both Sibelius and Finale. Hope you enjoyed it. Please go to our Facebook page or leave some comments here and let us know what you thought and give us some suggestions on other tutorials you'd like to see in the future and we'll try to accommodate it. Thanks for watching.